Hi guys and welcome back to Jurassic Unicast. Being members of the Jurassic Park podcast hosted by Brad Joss, myself, James Hawkins, was joined with Stephen Hurrell and Tom Fishenden to spend the day down at Frontier Developers Headquarters in Cambridge and to play the new game, Jurassic World Evolution. Hi, oh yeah, this is James. Firstly, I'd like to appreciate the amazing backdrop which we can see on the game here. And um, we're just going to find a new game to start from the beginning. And uh, we should get going. Hello. So we're yeah, leading well. straight into uh, a loading Ian screen. You may have heard of me. Uh, Ian Malcolm well, starts talking. You have heard of me, especially now that you're here. So before you are the islands that you need to manage, if you can. The five deaths. Jeez, if only... If only there had been five. Okay, this is as good a place as any to begin. Isla Matanceros. It's relatively stable. Yeah, you can uh, you can get your feet wet here, and you should, because diving into the deep end of the pool is where the big, angry, hungry things are, and uh, you want to be ready before you try that. Okay, so firstly, I want to talk about how amazing that entrance is. It takes you instantly back to Jurassic Park. On the, the island arrival, and the helicopter, the cliche, just perfect. And the, the graphics so far are just absolutely stunning. At this point, I'm just working out the controllers. Um, at the moment, I'm using the mouse uh, and keyboard. Uh, I had a choice of both, mouse, keyboard, and uh, an Xbox controller, which was connected. Um, but it, the game was on PC. It was obviously Microsoft at the same uh, rights, so they can use their controllers. Um, you should just attach it to the side, but watch out for dinosaurs. <laughs> ah, just kidding. <laughs> I'm going through all the, a few of the tabs here on the left using the mouse. Um, the first thing I need to do is get an, incub an incubation um, hatchery. Um, as you can see, I'm trying to aim for the blue zone, which is where it connects in, and then one thing instantly Let's I liked was the the way it was building. I loved the building. And you've got the little um, cranes going up and down. Um, nice little fine detail there. Okay, so Cobalt is a, is a guy in the corner that kind of just sort of guides you through the basic controls of what You'll you need, need to, to do to get the park the up and running. Um, he's asking me to grid. connect the path, because without connecting the path to the buildings and the, the buildings are not operational, it's kind of like the way of unlocking the doors as such. So the first dinosaurs you get are the Struthiomimus, which is a really basic, cheap dinosaur. And uh, the genome's already... Uh, about 65 percent playing with nature's laws so you can, what can pretty much hatch wrong? it straight away Come on, and uh, the chances are that at that percentage so the dinosaurs will survive relatively long since the last time. yes mr finch yes the the last time there's always a last time and a next Okay, so the first dinosaur is hatched. Life, it begins. The most precious moment, the result of incalculable actions and reactions, trials and errors, genetic mutations and unknowable combinations, chaos, all leading to a living, breathing... Okay, so this is the first time I've seen the dinosaurs up close, so I'm just panning around... And using the we, controls to go in and out just and I'm still trying to get used to them so eventually I do grab the controller so well and um, you I zoom guess. in and out by using the triggers the Hammond Foundation has three main areas of interest security entertainment and science I've already nudged the heads of each division to reach out to you personally. They'll offer opportunities and incentives for you to be part of their team. Choose one of their contracts. It'll help you develop your facility. Okay, so my first contract 
has uh, come up. I'm taking the entertainment route. Um, Steve is doing the science and Tom's doing the security. So we've all got slightly different um, general objectives. Uh, mine's to get the park up and running and earn as much money as possible in the shortest amount of time. In our parks, fill up our facilities with warm bodies. Numbers bring revenue, excitement and opportunities. Okay, so one of my first contracts is to contracts build a um, expedition center. Now what the expedition the center does is uh, basically it allows you to go off to dig sites and collect dinosaur fossils, on. bring them back to the research and um, fossil center where you can then extract them for DNA or sell them for profit. Okay, so whilst I was placing, trying to place this uh, excavation center, um, hey, Zizer, I have a contract doing? pop up I got some cool stuff you need from to be a part of, so um, Isaac, and, and my contract team. says I need Mine. to get a um, genome of Ceratosaurus at at least 50%, um, so which pretty much is, I think they start I off in the 40s, the and uh, so I'm going to go and try and fi uh, go and send an exc the excavation planet. off to find a Ceratosaurus, and hopefully they'll come back with some fossils. What is more attractive than new dinosaurs? Well, me, of course. <laughs> yeah, no, what I'm saying is let's get some fresh dinos in the hopper. Okay, so at this point, I'm going through the uh, the research lab, and I've um, I've also noticed that you can only click to download, uh, sorry, to to buy and unlock one thing at a time. So once that's downloaded and unlocked, you can then use your money to unlock an, another part of uh, research. But um, as you can see on the left hand side, there's colours and changes uh, to the skin tone. On the right, you've got uh, different animals that get spliced in with the DNA of the animals. Okay, so now my Ceratosaurus has finally been uh, completed. I can now hatch it. Let's have a look. I love the the gameplay of this. Just the the cinematic. It looks absolutely stunning. I love how, um, how closely they've got it to resemble the one from Jurassic Park Three. And I've got my next mission, uh, which is construct a power and fast food restaurant and research into the research centre for a clove shop. And once I've unlocked those, um, hopefully I'll be able to place them and then that will earn me a little bit of money. But at the moment, as you can see, I've not got a lot of money left over from all this incubating and uh, hatching and creating uh, the fence paddocks. It kind of does ruin your money a little bit. Okay, so I've just, while I was uh, laying down at both of my buildings, uh, in that time, the Ceratosaurus has got a bit mad and angry and it's broke into my Struthiomimus enclosure. So instantly I was like, went into panic mode and I'm like, oh my God, where's my ACU team? And realized I haven't actually laid down an ACU unit yet. So I've got no means of tranking the Ceratosaurus. So I'm like, oh, panicked quickly. Had to sell stuff to get the ranger station up and running. And um, yeah, so at the moment, my animal is currently on a rampage. Okay, so I'm in the helicopter. I'm a little bit further forward into the game. I've created some buildings. I've um, also made a lot more dinosaurs and viewing galleries. So as you can see, there. there's a new building now attached on the side of the paddock. But my mission now is I've just made two Draco Rexes and a new enclosure, and I need to make sure I change them. So I've gone straight into the cockpit view from the side where I can shoot them. I think I missed my first shot, but I'm very, very happy because I got used to these controls straight away. This is the first time I've tranked, or second time I've tranked, and I've got a straight hit there. And then the other one, little toe rag, runs off just as I shoot him. But I managed to trank them both quite quickly. And then um, my next mission is obviously to move them into the new paddock. Missed that one there, and then managed to get it eventually after about four or five shots. There we go, sedative going in, and they trank pretty quick. And done. Okay, so once I've done that, uh, I need to click onto the 
the removal team will they'll go in and do that job for you. Just click on the animal you want to remove, click into the location you want it to go into, and there you go, the little extraction team comes in, they tie it up, get rid of it for you, and then uh, take it off to, and there's a little bar going down there, take it off to the new area. Hey guys, so I'm doing the science division and I'm just getting my first mission now from Dr. Dua. I've got an interesting opportunity for you to consider. It will allow us to work together to create life. Pure life. If you've been listening to Dr. Malcolm, then you know how important this is to us. And to me. Okay, so it seems I need to get a 50% genome for a Triceratops, so I'm going to send my expedition team out to get a Triceratops. I knew you were my kind of person. Inquisitive, driven, and I knew you couldn't resist this opportunity. So let's get started. Together, we can create a more authentic version of our dinosaurs. That means a complete genome. And I think you are up to the challenge. Don't disappoint. Good! Your first expedition team is out. They'll bring back what they find to the fossil center for extraction. Okay, it's going to take a couple of minutes for me to get the genomes for the Triceratops, so I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Okay, the dig team should have finished by now, so let's just check on their progress. Yeah, the dig team's returning. So, oh, look at that, the helicopter's coming down. Let's check out the fossils. This is where you get all your, uh, sorry, you extract all your DNA from your fossils. Let's have a look and see what we've got here. Yeah, cool. Oh, got seven of them. So I'm going to start extracting these and I'll get back to you. Okay, it seems that I've got enough genomes now to incubate the dinosaur. So um, let's just have a look on here, see if I can modify it in any way. This is where you'll be able to add your colours, um, increase the lifespan if you can. Um, or like, tailor make the dinosaur to how you want it really. But as we're so early on in the game I haven't got much on here so just a normal incubation on this one. Okay. Shouldn't take long to hatch. There you go, I've sped it up for you. So about to release the dinosaur. <laughs> See, what's interesting is that um, every dinosaur that they've um, put into the game, once you release it into your park, they've created uh, special music for each dino. Our new specimens, sorry, dinosaurs, are meeting expectations, but we want them to thrive. That's your next assignment. Making sure our specimens are properly cared for. In other words, dinosaur welfare. The difference with dinosaurs is that they have no point of reference to understand humans, so don't expect much in the way of thank yous. I've been monitoring what you've been up to with great interest, and I'm a little disappointed that Dr. Dua came to you for this assignment instead of bringing me into the loop as she should have done. I'll discuss this with her later. Well, Henry Way is not too happy with me. Oh my gosh, you got a sick dinosaur on your hands. It's time to treat it. Or what comes next, that's going to be on your hands as well. Right, so it seems that I've got a sick Triceratops. Nice little touch from um, the Jurassic Park film. So I've got to get my rangers to go and medicate the dinosaurs before it dies. Or spreads diseases to other dinos I'm guessing so where is the trike one okay I'll go and activate at the ranger station that'd be easier 
nice little touch that they've added in that you can drive the all the vehicles in the game. So you can take control and have, like, drive around the park and see it from like, a guest point of view. Conditions clear. It's quite easy to control. Conditions calming. Try and run people over. I like how they've added a like Central American radio stations on. Jeep can swim. Let's try and take control and medicate this trike. You need to medicate that animal if you are to save it. Red work. There you go. Dinah's not sick. That's good. path to a pure strain dinosaur. This will definitely shift the paradigm. I can't ignore this accomplishment. Oh, with your help, obviously. That goes without saying. But under my direction. I think we make a good team. Let's do this again. I'll let you know when. I've witnessed Dr. Dua flail and fail before. Now with you, she believes she is on her way. Does she really think she can accomplish what I have not? Okay, I've fast forwarded a bit now. Uh, my park's doing quite well, so I'm now gonna splurge out some money on a innovation centre. It's quite expensive, one, one point, one point five mil. So I've just got to try and find enough space to put it down. It seems a bit far, quite close, because you have to connect all the power grids up. Power everything, so it's reasonably close. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll get the landscaping tool and just create an area here. So here we can like flatten the land, like remove all the water. You can add forests, grass, raise so you can put peaks lower it so you can have like valleys so the terrain is basically up to you you can design your island how you want it so that should be enough for the innovation center okay. now you got to be careful when you're putting down this stuff because uh, I've actually put this down the wrong way as you can see once I've finished building Scaffolding's coming down. Let's just connect up some paths. There it is. Would have been better if it was the right way round. I'm not destroying it and spending one and a half million again. So it's really nice and fluid to ladies' paths. and easy there go. look personally I don't care how many buildings we have but I learned a long time ago that less is never more huh more is more so make more okay I 
I see you've hatched a Triceratops. It might be cute now, but that's only gonna last for about a week. Okay, I'm almost at three stars, so that should unlock the next island, level two. Set days for you to sort out my dinos on here. Things are a bit out of control. second island. Yes, Site C, more commonly known as Isla Muerta. Well, that's the first level partially completed. Managed to unlock the second level, so what I'll do is now I'll head on to Tom's footage and see how he got on with the security division. Okay, guys, so this was kind of really my first look at the... Uh, research component of the game that you're going to see before you and you can see here I take a look at some of the different components that I'm able to research so things such as asset containment we go over the Hammond creation lab uh, and really just kind of look at all the different components research that we're Center able to upgrade my goal here was to upgrade the assets I already had in my park I didn't want to focus on building new stuff to begin with I thought it would be quite interesting to approach gameplay with the kind of upgrade as we go put our initial park in best possible standing it can be and then go forwards from there so we're now in the genetic research I'm going to leave you guys to take a little look at some of the other research items I dive into and I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of this gameplay. Okay, and then here you can really see me beginning to experiment with some of the fencing. So Rich Newbold, when we were talking to him and he was giving us a tutorial on the game, showed us that he likes to make a little holding pen for his dinosaurs before he lets them into their respective paddocks. So this is a tactic which will let you have one Hammond creation lab to hatch several different dinosaurs into several different types of enclosure. Uh, so here you can see me attempting to replicate what Rich showed us. Uh, it does go a little bit wrong, as you can see here. I am not the finest at creating fences. Um, I was rushing a little bit because I was really, really excited to be playing the game. But it is very intuitive when you're building fences. It's very, very easy to make a nicely shaped paddock. And as you can see here, we almost have got a complete holding area, which we can let our dinosaurs into so they can then progress into their respective paddocks. So... I continue to build this piece here. You can see I was struggling to line it up a little bit, but eventually we got there. Plonk this piece in the middle like so, and you can see we have a beautifully connected fence now. That like so. So that is the holding paddock constructed. Then I decided to just bring another fence straight across the middle like so. So you can see me lining everything up nicely. And then once all of these components are connected, if you bear with me while I continue to put fencing in, you can see I was really, really clumsy with the fencing. Fencing, if you want it to look good, it is definitely worth taking a little bit of time to just focus on the aesthetic you're going for. Um, but here I just wanted to get the most out of the game, so I was really kind of rushing to make a good looking, um, well not good looking obviously, as I've just said, but a functional fence. So here I put my last piece of fencing back in the middle here. I don't know why I tried to put a Hammond Creation Lab down, but uh, you can see like so. I place my last piece of fencing in the middle. We'll get there in a second. like so and that is now my fencing completed I then proceed to go and add a couple of gates as you'll see in a second don't know if I add them yet it looks like I've gone to take on a new mission 
but um, that is essentially how you can make a holding area for one of your paddocks. Okay, and then here you can see me preparing to test out this paddock mechanism I've made for the first time. So we released the beautiful Edmontosaurus, one of my favourite herbivores that we've seen in the game so far. And here you can see it coming out. I love how each dinosaur has its own unique uh, animation for exiting the Hammond creation lab. It's really, really nice and it helps to add a lot more character to these dinosaurs. So here you can see the Edmontosaurus is this out in my holding pen and it's the moment of truth it and it's gone for it it's we gone straight to one of the, the gates I've added into the herbivore the paddock it's we'll sitting for a second not sure whether to go in and then it charges in as we've just seen yeah, and from there I'm then able like to go to into the gate close it so the holding pen is now ready so if I decide I don't want to release the ed uh, egg the doubler, Edmontosaurus, there we go, then I could release a different creature instead. Okay, so here I made a rookie error. I accidentally opened the gate. Um, not entirely sure what I was doing here, but the Edmontosaurus has got out. It's loose. It is in my Jurassic World asset out of containment. So I decided, okay, this is the perfect opportunity to complete this security protocol and actually tranquilize the Edmontosaurus to complete the ACU mission. So here you can see that actually I had let it loose deliberately so my ACU team could go in and capture the creature all to complete the very first security contract that you have to complete as part of Jurassic World Evolution should you decide to go down the security tree. This is not the way I would okay, so you can see I miss a couple of shots, for the most part fairly accurate, I've captured the Edmontosaurus, it's tranquilised, it's put to sleep, right and now, now it's time to fly away and organise my transport. Okay, and here we can see I'm finally at a point in the game where I've earned enough money to place down a hotel to complete the next main mission in my security contract. This, I really, really like the fact that I had to actually work to earn the money to place this. The contracts themselves are very, very varied, as I was saying. So some will be big, some will be small, and some of the larger ones actually really encourage you to invest in the infrastructure of your park from a management uh, perspective. So you actually begin to actively think, what's going to make me the most revenue? What's going to allow me to build these new components that I need to progress in this particular tree the quickest? And that is a fantastic component to the game. I also really, really like the hotel model here. You'll see it um, in a few moments time, but it looks absolutely fantastic It is very similar in style to the one that we got in Jurassic World and overall It's just a really fantastic model and one thing I would like to say is all of the models in this game are absolutely phenomenal the dinosaurs the animation is tremendous there is no other video game that captures dinosaurs quite like this one and I genuinely mean that uh, the buildings feel very Jurassic in their nature they feel very well crafted to fit within that kind of modern Masrani global style architecture which looks fantastic and everything here just oozes Jurassic and especially uh, especially Jurassic World it looks absolutely 100% authentic to what you would expect and it helps to just make the game that much more of a fully immersive experience. So looks like the scaffolding is still up on the hotel here so we're not going to get to see it just yet but I can assure you when it is completed it looks fantastic. Okay guys so I thought we'd wrap this section from me up over the security footage over the security centre itself being built. So the idea here is within Evolution, there are three different centers, the Security Center, the Innovation Remember, Center, I didn't see the third one, but presumably a Science Center, and each of these contributes to your different path. So if you're doing security, obviously you'll want the Security Center and going so on and so forth. Um, so it's really, really cool getting those unique buildings that each contribute to each group that you work with a little bit more. It helps to um, really kind of diversify each of the options here. So you really feel like you um, 
want to really specify your park towards those different security, well in this case security functions obviously and maybe something else. So while the security centre is building you can see we've just put up, I believe it was a fast food restaurant, I'm quickly checking my island rating, you can see doing fantastic which is nice to see and then as it continues um, you can see I'm looking again facility rating can see I need more dinosaurs and better welfare so I'm going to continue to edit those functions and here I was really sat considering what each one would mean for a moment I think at this point in time I was talking to James and Steve so I just paused it for a second while I was talking to them but you can see facility rating wise we're on four and a half stars so it's that dinosaur rating we need to get up and you need to get both up as both influence your overall island rating as you can see so then uh, hopefully in a second here we'll be moving forwards yep you can see I am now jumping back in we're gonna head back around to the security center now and you can see the security center built up Look, so personally. that explains a little bit about how the visitor centers function they give you revenue based on your reputation with each division and also draw visitors relating to that division to your park and here I was really really impressed with the security center its aesthetics the design is fantastic it feels very specific to that kind of security function and looks great so we're placing down a storm center there isn't really any need for this on Matanceros but I just wanted to place it down to see what it looked like and here you can see again another fantastic graphical design uh, all the buildings here look absolutely phenomenal so guys I'm going to wrap it up here not much else happens in this gameplay really hope you've enjoyed a look at Jurassic World Evolution it's a fantastic game the management functionality is spot on and I had an absolute blast getting hands on with it to get this footage for you guys. Five minutes. Drop what you're doing and leave now.